It's the 202. It's the 202. It's the 202. It's the 202. This is how we do when we party. It's the 202. It's the 202. Hello, everyone. Today on the 202, he's been everything from a nightclub doorman to a model to a DC restaurateur and bookstore owner. The question is, what's next for one of DC's most versatile entrepreneurs? Plus, the DMV's Grammy-nominated singer-songwriter Raul Medon proves his album's title, Badass and Blind, is pretty accurate. It's all right here on the 202. And welcome to the 202. I'm Furman Patterson here with my lovely co-host, Miss Michelle Wright. Thank you, Furman. And over on the turntables is the 202's guest DJ today, <laughs> DJ Lenny Mad Hits. Now, he is one of the city's busiest entrepreneurs, constantly expanding his portfolio of DC brands. And Pizza, Tad's Bulletin, Kramer Books, the question is, what's next for DC's super successful entrepreneur, Steve Salas? Steve. Thanks so much for hey, stopping by, what's happening? Mr. Busy Man. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm never too busy to come spend time with you guys. Thanks so much for having me today. Love, we, the, love the music. Thank <laughs> you. The club in here. We did that great. just for you. I, I asked that question before we got on air, and I was like, did you put this guy on? Because I used to be in the nightclub industry, and so... This is good, good stuff. Wow, well you have a lot that we've experienced that you have touched. You've been such a visionary and pizza. Well, we've gotta first talk about that. I mean, so delicious. I love the spicy sauce. <laughs> Thank you. I loved the I spicy that. sauce. <laughs> Tell us about uh, getting the first pizza chain and franchise and all that. Or it wasn't a franchise, no? No, the idea originated actually in New York. I was living okay. in New York City at the time and uh, saw a really great opportunity in, in my mind. Back in 2011, there was this emergence of this finer dining pizza uh, sort of world that was taking part, where you had fine dining chefs that were coming up with these, uh, using pizza almost as a canvas, and coming up with these really interesting ideas. And so you saw that. It required a lot of discretionary income to go spend money there because they're higher-end restaurants. You saw also the buy the slice pizza shop really on every corner in New York. And so uh, I really felt that there was an opportunity to bring the speed, efficiency, and convenience of by the slice mm. with some semblance of quality and sophistication that would rival, I guess you could call it, an elevated casual or fine dining experience. We felt that if we paired that with some of the demands of what the consumers wanted, you know, still want today, which is customization, personalization, and value approachability, we felt that um, we potentially had a business that could work. Wow. Wow. Well, we get the impression that with Ann Pizza, which was a fantastic brand, yes. that you learned something about branding because uh, the names that you've acquired or, or, or gotten under your belt now, Ted's Bulletin uh, and Kramer Books, which is a, you know, a well-known uh, bookstore and restaurant in D.C. So what is it that branding does for a company that, that no other does? Well, brands are, I think, more important now than ever for different reasons. I'm under the deep belief that uh, you need to have something much more profound and significant than just a great product and service. Having a great product and service puts you in the game, mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't get you to the levels of being aspirational. And so, you know, a lot of things that we do, we think about, well, first and foremost, to be in the game, we've got to create a great product or a great service. And then secondly to that is, how do we connect with our consumers in, in a more profound and deeper level? How do we align ourselves ideologically with our values? And how do we align that with our consumers and, and build a place that's safe, a place where people can define themselves through our brands? And so that it's a much more significant thing nowadays than just selling a great product and having a good value proposition. And so we really think about that um, really in everything we do. You know, mm. Using pizza as an example, you know, we took the ultimate comfort food in pizza. And the whole idea around Ann was to take that ultimate comfort food and pizza and connect it with people and connect it with your communities and connect it with inside of your place. And so we've seen a tremendous resonance with our, uh, with our, uh, with our guests and, and the consumers about, and the people about the brand. And, and it was, it's really been just honestly way beyond my expectations. And I think as it pertains to Kramer's and, and Ted's, Great DC brands uh, for different reasons. I mean, Kramer's is an iconic institution. Absolutely. Uh, it's been interwoven into the fabric of Washington DC for you know f over four decades. It's way longer than I've even been alive. <laughs> and um, you know, I, I felt when I had that opportunity to, to buy that business, uh, felt a tremendous sense of stewardship, uh, knowing that I was carrying the torch from the founders, who are very you know three very uh, dynamic and fantastic people. And with Ted's, you know, it's 
Who doesn't love TEDs? I mean, it's <laughs> actually, I started going to TEDs when I first moved to New York, um, sorry, from New York to DC. Yeah. And uh, we were starting the Ann Pizza over on 8th Street Northeast. And I used to, when my family or friends would come into town, I'd always take them to TEDs every weekend uh, for brunch. So yeah. it just, it, I mean, you know, at the time was a, obviously an avid yeah. uh, customer. Go with and, you know. Go with um, you know. You know, yeah. fast forward a few years later, and now uh, I happen ah. to be the yeah. owner of the business. Steve, you've accomplished, accomplished so much. What's a typical day like? <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. I actually don't feel like I've accomplished that much. I know it might sound weird, but I, I, just, I just try to stay at it. I really like what I do. I don't really look at what I do as work. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm really passionate about creating great products, uh, disrupting industries, uh, giving a wonderful place for people to work. I'm a big believer in this whole notion of creating extraordinary, which is this whole idea around how do we create a great environment for our people uh, and take care of our people and nurture our people. You know, a lot of our businesses are highly human capital intensive. And so we have to first take care of our people. And, and I really believe there's a direct correlation from that into taking care of our guest. And as a result of that, the lagging indicator of all of that is strong financial results. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just wanted to put that out there because I think it's important. But my days are, you know, it's funny. It's, they vary, you know, like this morning I was up around 5.30, I worked out in my house, um, had meetings all day and phone calls, now I'm here and I'll, I'll go back at it, you know, after this and, um, you know, probably run until about 8 o'clock and then I'll go home and hang out with my dog and my wife. So quickly before we go, I read the most interesting thing about another venture of yours, it's prefab houses yeah. and oh, yes. you're about to launch some this year, but quickly tell us about that before we go. Absolutely. So, um, I think holding true to what I said a moment ago about disrupting industries, mm -hmm. uh, this would be another area of doing that. And so I'm one of the first developers in the United States to build homes using a process called aerospace robotics. Really, it's, it's a prefabricated, panelized product. And so we effectively are building homes in climate control factories, and we're shipping in the panels. And uh, I always liken it to putting together, like it's like grown-up Legos, you know, because you like, <laughs> sit there and you put it together. But uh, it's a fantastic product. Uh, you cannot replicate that in the field. And so uh, we're really working with cutting-edge people. We learned about this process from Germany. Uh, the Germans are really advanced in their engineering capabilities. And so it's funny because when you go to Europe, you don't see people building things stick-framed. You actually see people building you know, the way I'm alluding to, and vice versa here, everything's being built stick, stick frame. So when people right. see us building this way, they're a little bit like, well, what is, what is going on here? But uh, we've put up two homes on Fox Hall Road, um, and uh, they're up. You know, yeah. they're up, and we're finishing them now, and we hope to hopefully sell them soon. Steve, so. you're going to get job applications. <laughs> oh, listen, we want them. We want fantastic people. You know, we, uh, culture's important to us. Um, you know, we have a strong value system, and... You know, we just want great people that want to do extraordinary things. And, uh, you know, I give a lot of rope to our talent. I want, you know, our people to thrive. And I've learned that the, probably the greatest benefit you can offer is an intangible one. And that's to allow people to interweave their fabric into the DNA of your company so they feel like that there's buy-in and that um, they're really contributing in a, in a larger and more profound level than just making a paycheck or, or getting, you know, benefits that other people can offer. So. Wow. Fantastic. Well, yep. that's what you call an uber entrepreneur. Not yep. the car, but yep. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Thank so. you, Steve. Coming up, hey, his thanks. soulful so voice can be heard on recordings with pop stars like uh, Shakira, uh, Enrique Iglesias and Christine Aguilera. And on his own albums, his voice can even become a miraculous trumpet. <laughs> Raul Madan is next. The 202 will be right back. It's the 202. 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 Welcome back to the 202. Singer and guitarist Raul Madan is one of the most versatile artists who also happens to be blind. He's performed with top stars and recorded nine albums of his own. The New York Times has described him as, quote, a one-man band who turns a guitar into an orchestra and his voice into a chorus. Now that's some pretty strong stuff, man. <laughs> yeah. Especially coming from the New York Times. Yeah, from the New York Times. Thank you for joining us. This, this is amazing. How long Thank have you been doing this and getting paid for it? Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, I been getting paid. Well, I went to school. Unlike a lot of people, I was in college for the first, you know, till I was like, I don't know, 23, 24, something like that. So mm -hmm. 
Um, and I really, you know, for me to do college seriously, I had to just do it. I couldn't, like, do that and have a gig at night. And, you know, for a blind person, I mean, for me, I couldn't do that. I mean, it, it took everything I had to be in college and get good grades and, you know, do, do the thing. So mm -hmm. um, after that, I um, worked in the studio for a long time. So I always played guitar but I was actually getting paid more money as a background singer. So that's where I worked with Shakira and all these people. Oh. Um, I, I worked on a bunch of records in the 90s when I was in, in Miami, so. Wow. Wow. So yeah. even, even before that, you, you picked up this music talent somewhere. Was it your parents? Yeah, I mean, my, my uh, parents always encouraged me to pursue music. They knew that I had a gift. My father made sure that I got started getting guitar lessons when I was young. And so I took private guitar lessons off and on all the way up until I was in my mid-20s. You know, f vocal lessons, guitar lessons. It's really important, you know, these days people, there's a lot of sort of emphasis on people just learning it themselves. But training, at least for me and my value system, mm -hmm. is really important. Because if you're good and you have skills, there's, you're always going to work in the music business in okay. some way. Mm -hmm. Excellent. But the training is important. It enhances everything you do. I want to talk about the music business. I was mentioning I, I have a nephew. He was born blind. His name is Glenn, and he is so into music. He wants to work in the music industry. And you said, tell him no. Uh, <laughs> Why? Uh, the music industry is in, in flux right now in a big way. So there's, there's I, I, I don't want to be totally negative because the positive side of it is that I guess you could get on YouTube and do something and go viral, right? And, and, you know, not be with a record company or anything. The, the other side of it, though, is that the industry itself is in super flux. Um, mm. The labels really can't make any money anymore because everybody gets it for free. I mean, imagine if you were starting a business, you're talking about entrepreneur, and, and you're starting a business, and, and, and they tell you, your product is going to be free. Okay. Well, what kind of business is that? Right, right. How can you make money if your product is free? That's, that's the state of the music business right now. Wow. We, we look at TV shows like American Idol and The Voice, and you see how they want to package an artist. Mm -hmm. In today's uh, music world, you know, what do you think about that, and how do you package yourself? I don't watch those shows. Um, <laughs> but, you know, that's me. I mean, I, I don't, I don't uh, you know, this is a, a very, uh, as I said, it's a very dynamic time that we're in now. So, you know... Um, there's a lot of things that, you know, I grew up in the 70s. I mean, I'm a, a slightly older person, so I grew up in a completely different music scene. Mm. Um, it's all about video. It's all video driven now. It's just a very different scene. So I don't I don't want to be totally negative about those shows, but I don't I don't um, I, I'm into music. Yeah. So therefore, I don't watch those shows. <laughs> how, how often are you on the road, Raul? How uh, often do you lot. tour? A lot, yeah, more than maybe I'd like to. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm on the road a lot. I, I'm a, the other big part of what I do is, is I'm a songwriter and producer, mm -hmm. which is, is why I call the album Badass and Blind. So um, I really value my time at home because I'm always working. Um, I use a computer to engineer and produce my album. I use a program called Sonar <clears throat> Cakewalk that allows me to actually edit audio and do all the things that a professional audio engineer does on that level. Wow. wow. And, and, and I do it all with, with, without a mouse, with keyboard commands. So, man. Whoa. Yeah. And, that's, and that's what the New York Times is talking about, your one-man band. Um, now, I also heard you do this fantastic thing. I saw it on YouTube, um, impersonating a trumpet. Yeah. When did you learn you had this pe peculiar talent? Um, I think when I got to college, there was a particular trumpet player that I really loved that was there. Uh, he was a, a former Count Basie trumpet player, and he actually played a flugelhorn. It had this really warm sound. And I've always also been really into Miles Davis, so um, I started to just kind of do it. I never really thought of it as a performance gimmick, and I started doing it, and I realized that it, it really had an impact. But I didn't want to do it like the police academy. I wanted to mm. do it and have it be a real instrument and have it be something that I could do that people would listen to, not as a, oh, there's that gimmick, but as, a, as an instrument. Wow. wow, fascinating. Anyone that you haven't gotten to work with, write or collaborate with that you want to? Um, man, sure, I mean, uh, 
I don't know. I, I guess in in terms of uh, I, I'm 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 always anxious to work with uh, I don't know somebody that's doing hip hop in a really cool way. Most mm. hip hop I don't like, but uh, I, it, Kendrick Lamar is, is oh, cool. Oh, that cool. would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I'm, I'm always interested in working with, with great musicians of all stripes, you know, whether it's world music, African music, jazz, um, you know, classical, just, you know, as long as it's music, you know. Yeah. Wow. Raul, well, I'm anxious. Any musician would be honored to work with you. You're a great musician. Yes. Anyway, up next, the 202 lights up the stage with a performance from the DMV's uh, Grammy-nominated singer-songwriter. Performing a little music from his ninth studio album, Raul Madon is next. The 202 will be right back. It's the 202. It's the 202. It's the 202. It's the 202. Oh. And welcome back to the 202. Take the guitar techniques of Santana and Feliciano and mix it with the voice of a great soul singer from the 70s. And that only gives you a hint of the incredible talent of our guest, Grammy-nominated singer-songwriter Raul Midon. Take it away. on earth so hard to find real peace begins inside in our hearts and in our minds hearts and minds begin to see that one and all make you and me what we know can set us free rearrange reality reality is what we know we can change our rivers flow plant a seed watch it grow build a shelter build a home home is where my heart will stay even when i'm far away makes no difference what they say as long as you will be mine Sunshine, when you're with me, I can fly. Oh, my. The sunshine, when you're with me, I can fly. Yeah. When I'm feeling sad and low, and I'm not sure where to go, and all the good times that I've known have gone and left me all alone. All alone, I'll never be, long as you are here with me. You're in everything I see, and everything I'm doing. All I do, I do for you. You're my sun, you're my moon. Every lazy afternoon, you're my inspiration. Inspiration lights the way, brings a sparkle to each day, makes the dark clouds go. Away, so let us let the children play when you're with me. I can fly. I'm fine. Sunshine when you're with me. I can fly. Hey, yeah. Thank you. 
Sunshine. When you're with me, I can fly. Sunshine. When you're with me, I can fly. All right. Music is the reason why people laugh and people cry. Sing it, dance, and clap your hands. It's how the whole world understands. Understands that we are one. Makes no difference what you've done. Where you live under the sun, we are only human. Only human, yes, it's true. Still, the mystery is you. And the sky so clear and blue makes every day feel so brand new. Brand new day throughout the world for all the little boys and girls. If everybody lends a hand, we can live. We can live together When you're with me I can fly Sunshine When you're with me I can fly All right Now, now sunshine When you're with me I can fly <laughs> this one's called Pedal to the Metal. Now, I don't drive, but if I did, I'd be a race car driver. I don't die, but if I did, I'd be a deep sea diver. Yeah. Back up plan, I'm not your man. Just in case, doesn't win the race, I won't get your buried treasure with compromise and half measures. Push on through till you get to the other side and keep the pedal to the metal. True believer, yes I would. I don't deceive, but if I did, I'd be a wily dealer. Back up plan, I'm not your man. Just in case, doesn't win the race, won't get your buried treasure with compromise and hate. Just push on through till you get to the other side And keep the pedal to the metal mm -hmm. Oh, right to keep the pedal to the metal to keep the pedal to the metal now Oh, yeah to keep the pedal to the metal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some say it all comes to nothing. No sense in trying at all. But I'd rather wind up with something, yeah. So I'll get up when I fall till I've given it all. And keep the pedal to the metal. Mm. Oh, yes, 
keep the pedal to the metal. Uh, all right. Now keep the pedal to the metal now. Keep the pedal to the metal, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep the pedal to the metal. <laughs> thank you so much, man. Oh, that was a you. terrific show. Awesome. You got to come back again with us. Yes. Thank All you. right. Thank you for what a me. great, what a great show today. Thanks to Steve Salas and Raul Madone, and of course my co-host Michelle Wright. And thanks to DJ Lenny Mad Hits and to all of you for watching. Furman and I will see you again next time on the 202. But don't forget to check out episodes of the 202 on DC Radio. That is 96.3 HD4 and at DCRadio.gov. All right. But for now, we're going to let you take us out. We need some more. So don't get no tighter yeah. Herman and Michelle can't get, get no right Taxation, no representation nah. But the 202 repping for the capital nation uh -huh. So from 703 to the 301 yeah. yeah, we all come to have some fun It's the 202 It's the 202 This the 202 It's the 202 This is how we do When we party in the 202 yeah. It's the 202 yeah. This the 202 it's the 202. Yeah. This the 202. This the 202. It's the 202. This is how we do when we party it's in the, the 202. It's the, it's the 202. It's the 202. It's the 202. It's the 202.